this hand function, we'll get to your questions. Well, it's pretty obvious that it was a good win for the opening game of the season. Uh, I think any time you win a game in the SEC, you got to be really happy about that. Um, I thought we really played well in the first half, which sort of go, goes to show the the preparation, the focus that the players had. Um, you know, going into the game, the good job that they did, sort of overcoming all the uncertainties and the disruptions that we had getting ready for the first game. Uh, but we also didn't maintain our intensity throughout the game. Uh, I don't think we really played with the same energy and enthusiasm in the second half. Um, and I, I think it showed, you know, in our performance. Uh, and I also think that, you know, we tried to give some other players some opportunity to play. Uh, and it was probably a learning experience for them to understand, you know, what the preparation is, the mindset you have to have to come off the bench, to stay in the game before you get in the game so that you, when you do get an opportunity to play, you're going to be able to go out there and make the adjustments and do the things that you need to do to be able to execute uh, and play well. You know, as I said, after the game, you know, after first games, you know, you find out who you are, where you are, uh, what you have to do to get better. So the big focus is um, on what do we have to do to get better. Uh, and um, I think improvement uh, is a word that we use a lot. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get a lot of players uh, to uh, make a significant amount of improvement this week uh, so that we can play better. We're certainly, you know, looking forward to home opener, you know, Saturday. Um, you know, so uh, be great to uh, bring football back to Tuscaloosa, play in Bryant-Denny Stadium. Um, so we're certainly looking forward to that. Um, you know, Texas A&M is a very good team. You know, Jimbo has done a really good job there. They've got like 16 starters back from last year's team, um, seven or eight on each side of the ball. Um, got a really good running back. Quarterback's got a lot of experience, um, very good player. Um, you know, offensive line has four out of five starters back. Spiller's a good running back. They've they they got really good players. Um, they've got seven or eight starters back on defense, and their defense was ranked last year. Played very well last week against Vanderbilt, and only given up 12 points. So um, this is going to be a much more challenging game for us. Uh, it's a good all-around team. They play well on special teams. They've got good specialists. So. Um, it's going to be necessary for us to make a significant amount of improvement and play for 60 minutes in this game uh, because of the, the type of team we're playing playing against. Okay, we'll start with John Zener. Yeah, Coach, uh, Jalen Waddle seems like he's been a guy who's a playmaker pretty much from when he got on campus. But how much has he progressed since then? And, and also, is he the guy that's just kind of fun, even on the sidelines, to watch an open field? Well, he's fun to watch, that's for sure, um, whether he's in punt return, kickoff return, uh, playing on the field. Uh, I, I think the, the big thing that Jalen has sort of uh, expanded his role and, and his game is, you know, he can play all the positions at receiver now. We can move him around. Uh, before, he was mostly a slot guy. Um, but now he can make plays anywhere on the field, and I think that's very helpful. Um, you know, guys like him, you know, you expect people to try to double, you know, guys like him. So when you can move him around, that makes it a little bit more difficult for the defense. And, um, you know, this guy's got, you know, great energy, plays with great enthusiasm, loves to play, great competitor, uh, really a joy to be around. We'll go to Brett Hudson. Hey, Coach, what did you think of Sam Johnson's three punts in the game? And do you think you might use multiple punters in this game now that you're not uh, hindered by the travel roster restrictions. No, we thought Sam did a pretty good job for the first game. I know he averaged like, you know, 38-3 or something like that. Um, but they, the ball was placed where we needed it to be placed so that we could cover. Um, he got the ball off quickly. So, um, you know, all the, the sort of things that you don't look at, uh, he did well as a punter. And hopefully we can get him to, you know, just – continue to do that, maybe improve a little bit on, you know, hitting the ball and uh, getting it down the field a little more. But I'd rather have a 38 to 40 yard punt that we can cover than a 50 yard punt that we can't cover because there's no hang time and it's a line drive. So 
Um, we're still evaluating the competition there, and we'll, st we'll continue to do that. But um, we're not going to use the game as a, as, as a tryout uh, for punter. We'll go to Tony Sakalas. Uh, sticking on special teams, Coach, uh, the kickoffs, you let Chase Allen handle those. Uh, is that something we're going to be seeing with Will Reichert, uh, you know, coming back from injury? And then also separately, what have you seen from Reichert and his ability to come back from injury? Uh, Will's done a great job. He's 100%, no issues, kicked the ball well. Uh, he can kick off. Um, but, you know, we needed to have another kicker for him to have a role. Um, that's where Will got injured a year ago. So as long as we can get the efficiency in the kickoff using the people that we used in the game, we'll continue to do that. But we have 100% confident that Will we're 100% confident that if Will goes in the game, he'll do a great job kicking off as well. We'll go to Michael Casagrande. Just wondering what your evaluation, looking back at the defense, uh, any uh, film observations that came from them and uh, the way they played? Um, you know, we played pretty well in the first half. Second half, not as well. Um, There's a lot of formation adjustments and multiples um, that we had to adjust to in the game. and. You know, we made some mental errors uh, relative to that. Uh, some were costly. Um, stopped the run fairly well in the game. Um, probably made more errors in the passing game. And um, But, you know, I think the guys played hard. They played with a lot of toughness. Uh, we missed a few tackles in the secondary, but uh, none of them because we weren't trying to be very aggressive. Um, and I was encouraged uh, by the way we played. Uh, now, obviously, consistency and performance is going to be, you know, a big factor in that. And I don't think we played as well when some of the other guys got in the game, uh, which is going to be a great lesson for them to learn in terms of what they need to do to prepare so they can play well when their opportunity comes. Okay, Aaron. Nick, uh, Mac Jones has an ability, it seems, to, to move within the pocket and climb the pocket while also keeping his eyes down the field. I was wondering, in your experience, how – how coachable is that, and, and how much of it just is of a guy being comfortable in the pocket? Well, I think it's sort of a combination of both. Um, you know, Mac is pretty instinctive. He doesn't look down at the rush. He keeps his eyes down the field. Uh, he has a good feel in the pocket of how to move and create, you know, lanes for himself to throw the ball in and also avoid the rush. He keeps two hands on the ball in the pocket, which is really important. Um, and uh, I think he's got a really good grasp of the offense, so he has a really good expectation of where people are going to be. And I think he only made maybe one bad read in the game or one misread, I would say. And the rest of the time, he was pretty much on point. Go ahead, Charlie. Hey, Coach, this is a little off topic, but I wanted to ask you about that lucky penny that, that Kristen gives you before each game. Just what does that tradition mean to you? Well, it means a lot, you know. <laughs> I, I hate to admit that I'm superstitious, but um, so um, it's it's worked pretty well in the past, and hopefully it'll continue to work. And uh, I don't think people understand what Kristen goes through sometimes to, you know, get that penny to me. Especially, you know, this week she's we got a new grandbaby that she has to take care of, and you know she had to go through a lot to get that penny to me, and I appreciate it. Jeff Spiegel. Jeff? Oh, sorry, Coach. Coach, when, uh, when you see Jalen Waddle make a big catch like that through contact over the middle, and then Mac Jones take a hit like he did and throw a perfect strike to Dylan, what do plays like that do the rest of the team at that point in the game? Well, I, I think that um, these guys both set a great, great example uh, in terms of how they compete, the toughness they show in a game. Uh, and I think that uh, has a tremendous impact on, you know, everyone else. I mean, it certainly should. If, if you know, players are bought into the team and they're rooting for their teammates and they're into the game, um, anybody that's a competitor has, you know, a special appreciation for, you know, guys making great plays. And uh, sometimes great plays come out of toughness, not just, you know, fantastic ability. So uh, I, I think those two guys, you know, represented what we're trying to teach in terms of intangibles, you know, the kind of toughness, the kind of effort, the kind of 
uh, focus that you have to sustain your intensity for 60 minutes in the game. And uh, I think those two guys exemplified that fairly well in the game. We'll go to Dennis Dodd. Nick, uh, you, you were asked about it Saturday night, but I just wonder if you could expand on just the game day atmosphere with obviously not as many fans in the stands and, and then what, what you expect Saturday um, at Bryant Denny. Well, it was different. Uh, I have to admit that it was different. Um, but at the same time, you know, I thought we competed really hard, played really hard in the first half. Um, you know, guys play with a lot of toughness. We controlled the line of scrimmage. Uh, we were flying around on defense. Uh, so the fact that there were no fans there really didn't have any impact on that. Uh, but then we didn't do or play with the same level of intensity in the second half. Uh, and there were the same amount of fans and the same amount of noise. So um, I, I think this year, and I talked a little bit about this, you know, last week, you know, what is your DNA uh, as a competitor? Uh, because you can't really count on external factors like, you know, the crowd and the noise and the band and, you know, a lot of those things that, you know, can appeal to your emotion when you're playing in a game uh, because of the atmosphere. You can't really, you know, count on that. And I'm sure we'll have the best atmosphere that we can have relative to the number of people that we have in Bryant-Denny Stadium. Uh, we've always had great support here. But at the same time, I don't think the players can – you know, sort of count on that. I think it's got to come from, you know, their DNA of who they are and how they choose to compete and create value for themselves and don't, you know, sort of count on external factors to get you going. Okay, we got time for a couple more. We'll start with Mike Rodak. Nick, just how would you evaluate the running game, uh, particularly in the second half with um, Brian Robinson and Trey Sanders? Uh, it wasn't nearly as good. Um, we had a couple other offensive linemen in there. Um, you know, Trey didn't have a lot of opportunity, um, but at the same time, I think, you know, the experience will do him well. Um, and we, we didn't, you know, we didn't handle their front as well when we took some of the first guys out. Uh, and I think that contributed to it as well. Uh, I don't think the pocket was a solid, you know, when Bryce was in there uh, either, but I think these are all things that we can sort of learn from. Okay, we'll finish up with James Ogletree. Yeah, Coach, kind of wanted to ask you about the offensive line as well. Um, I'll, I'll keep it to the pass protection element there, especially in the first half with Mac. And then you you like to, to pull your two guards uh, a couple of times during the game. What do Deontay and Emil add there? Um, they do a good job. They're athletic guys. And, you know, they both are capable of pulling. They're physical. Um, you know, I, I, you got to give Missouri. I mean, I think you, you, th these guys have a good front seven. Uh, I mean, they got, they really physical. They really play hard. Uh, they play an eight-man front almost all the time, uh, every snap. Uh, so they're not easy to run against. Um, and, um, but I thought the running game was solid uh, for, you know, the first half. Uh, not as good as it needs to be in the second half, which we've already discussed some of those things. Um, and, you know, the one guard play pass just kind of goes along with all the other running plays that you have where you pull a guard. It makes it a little, little, little more difficult for the defense to read run pass. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. All right, thank you. Guys, we'll be back with the players here in just a minute.